In this lesson we're going to be looking at basic formulas in Microsoft Excel. Before we get into that it's important to realize that if you don't know already each cell within Excel so all of these individual boxes they all have a grid reference and that's made up by the column letter in this case B and the row number in this case 2. So the cell that's active at the moment is called cell B2 and this applies if we go down into this cell here for example this is Q29 so every cell has its unique reference so when we want to start using formulas to automatically calculate values in various cells we need to know those cell references so let's start with a simple example we're going to have a column in here and we're going to call it item name okay now we're going to have a list of various things here so it's assuming that we have some kind of retail business so in here we'll have eggs uh, in here we'll have uh, bananas and in the third row let's say we have apples okay just make that header bold there now the next field will be quantity so how many of each of these are we going to have so in this case we're going to say we have two eggs uh, we'll have four bananas and five apples okay again we'll just make that header bold now the, this has uh, because it's recognized that we put numbers in it's right aligned it so I'm just going to click on this the whole column there C and make that centrally aligned just so it looks a little bit neater and then in our next uh, column we're going to have unit cost and so for each and make that bold so for each egg for example we'll say that it's 50p uh, bananas let's say that they are 75p and apples let's say they're 40p now of course I would want to make these three cells uh, into um, a currency format at the moment they're just 0 0.5 alright so I'm going to hit control 1 on my keyboard which will bring up the formatting box and then I can just change it from general to currency with two decimal places that's fine and now I get my uh, pound sign and it formats it correctly again I'm going to select that whole column and just make it centrally aligned just so it looks a bit neater and then finally here we're going to have cost and this is going to be based on the quantity multiplied by the unit cost so for two bananas we should expect to see it as one pound alright so bold that and in fact let's go for all of these and make them more centrally aligned there we go <coughs> so we don't want to have to calculate this manually we want the uh, Excel sheet to be able to take the value in here which is D3 and multiply it by the value in here which is C3 so the way we do that is we select the cell in which we want to put the formula and with all formulas we start by pressing the equal sign that tells Excel that a formula is about to begin now there's two ways you could do this you could either type in the uh, cell reference of the cells that you want to use or you can just click on them so I make it easier I'm just going to click on this value here so equals and it's going to put C3 and we get these kind of running ants go around the cell and then we want to choose multiply so in Excel multiply is um, the asterisk so that would be shift and number 8 on Windows or if you have a number pad on the right hand side of your keyboard it's just above the number 9 but it's the asterisk that tells that we're going to do a multiplication so equals C3 multiplied by D3 so I'm just going to click on there now we get the running ants around the second cell so that's a simple formula now if I press my return key my enter key we see in there value of one now obviously want it to say one pound so again I'm just going to highlight these three cells I'm going to press control one on my keyboard to bring up the format box and change that to currency as well and that should change it to one pound now you can see that if I change the quantity to say six and then press return it updates that cost field because this value here is being generated by multiplying these two cells together okay by multiplying C3 and D3 together similarly if I change the cost and change that to say 45p then the cost changes to £2.70 as well now when I click on this cell I can see up in here this is called the formula bar I can see just the value because that's what I typed in similarly on the unit cost I see just the value but over in, in here where I put a formula I can see in the formula bar the actual formula that I used so equals C3 multiplied by D3 
So it's important to realize that in order to keep that formula working, we don't want to click in this cell and just type a number. So let's say, for example, we knew it was going to be three pounds. If I put in 3.00 and press enter, that's now overridden the formula. It's acting in exactly the same way as my quantity and unit cost fields. I've overwritten formula. So if I change that to four, my cost isn't going to update because I've just effectively hard coded that value in there. So in order to keep and retain that formula, you never touch the value inside. You don't go into that cell and change the value manually. So we're going to go back to equals that value there multiplied by that value there, press return, and we have our our formula generated uh, value come back. Okay. Now of course I want the same thing to happen in these two cells here in E4 and E5, but I don't want to have to keep retyping that same formula. So what you can do in Excel is you can basically copy the formula from an existing cell. So in this case, the formula in E3, I want to copy down to E4 and E5, but I also want to increment the row numbers. And Excel is quite clever at doing this. All I need to do is highlight the cell, and in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see that there's a black square. Now, when I move my mouse over, you'll see that my white cross changes to a black cross. That means I've hovered over that corner square, and I can now click and drag to copy that formula down. So if I just hold my mouse button down, drag down and then release, you can see that the value has appeared in these two cells and it's copied the formula over. Now in the beginning we looked at the value, or sorry, the formula in cell E3 and it was equals C3 times D3. If I now go down to cell E4, we can see that it's added one to that cell, so now equals C4 times D4, which is these two cells here. Similarly, if I go down to the third one, equals C5 times D5, and that's these two here. So Excel is quite clever in the way that it does that. It knows that you're trying to copy the cell down, copy the formula, and it adds values to it. So that's how you do a simple uh, multiplication formula in Excel. But of course, what we might want to do now is we want to total up these three values. We want to know how much our shopping is going to cost. In other words, £1.80 plus £3 plus £2. We don't want to have to do that ourselves. We don't want to have to get a calculator out and do that. So we want to do that ourselves. Now in Excel, we would use a formula once again, but we would use what's called the sum formula. Now, it, depending on which version of um, Excel you use, you might see somewhere this um, button here called auto sum. Now, it's very useful to use. I don't tend to use it myself because it can have a few problems, uh, especially if you have rows in between with uh, various different values but effectively what it will do is this I'll click on that cell and I click on the auto sum and it tries to guess what you're trying to add up it's summing up values in a number of cells now you can see with the running ants what it's tried to do here it's taking the value of E3 this cell here E4 E5 and E6 even though there's nothing in E6 because we've clicked in this cell and we're saying auto sum, it's going to try and add everything above it. So I press enter and there we have £6.80. Okay, and if we go back and look at the formula in the formula bar, instead of whereas before where we chose equals C3 multiplied by D3, what it's doing now is equals sum, in other words it's summing up, and then in brackets the start cell and the end cell. Now like I say, I don't tend to use this feature because of the fact that it's trying to add a value in E6, but there's nothing in there. So what I would do, I'll do it manually, so I'm just going to delete that out. I click in the cell that I want, and we do equals to tell Excel that we're going to use a formula, and then sum, because we want to sum up some data. Now, <clears throat> after sum, we need to open a bracket and specify the starting um, cell, in this case, E3. So sum, E3, and then we put colon, and then we click our last cell, which is E5, and then close our brackets. Okay, so that's the basic terminology, equals to sum, open brackets, our starting cell, colon, our ending cell, and then close bracket. Press return on that, and we have £6.80. And once again, if I change the value in here, let's say I change it to one banana, it should update the cell here, E4, as well as the total. So let's see, press return, and there we go. It adds it up. Okay, that's using the sum feature, but of course, 
some of the savvy listeners there might realize that if we can use a multiplication we should be able to use the other uh, mathematical functions such as addition so instead of using sum I'll just delete that out what you could do is you could say equals this cell e3 and then plus e4 plus e5 okay so we're just an equals e3 plus e4 plus e5 press return and of course we get exactly the same results now when we look at the formula bar we can see that's the formula we just typed in and that's a perfectly logical way of doing it and it's a perfectly valid way there's no right or wrong way when it comes to using the added adding signs or using the sum feature it's down to personal preference the only thing I would state is obviously if you had for example 20 rows of various different items you would end up having equals e3 plus e4 plus e5 plus e6 plus e7 etc up to however many rows you had so using the sum feature it always is going to be just a smaller formula so equals sum open bracket starting cell colon ending cell and close bracket and that colon basically says take the starting cell the ending cell and do everything in between which is why we see this blue border around all three cells press return and there's our formula okay so that's how would you would use a sum feature <clears throat> and just to expand on a couple of things that aren't necessarily relevant to this um, but for example you could say equals if you wanted if all these prices were x vat so you could say equals that value there multiplied by 1.2 um, that's the mathematical formula for calculating the VAT in the UK at the moment as a 20% VAT. So it equals E7 multiplied by 1.2, which gives £5.46. Okay, you could, if you already had VAT on there, or maybe you're doing a promotional offer and you want to subtract a certain amount, you could say, for example, equals the cost, take away £1 because you only want to, maybe you're doing a special offer, all orders, take £1 off. So it's £3.55 and so on and so on okay so you can use obviously add takeaway multiplication division uh, division if you do want to use that it's the forward slash in other words uh, let's say for example equals this price here divided by 10 so it's a forward slash and that will give you 0.46 okay or 46 pence so basically you've got the plus sign for addition you've got the minus sign you've got the division sign which is the forward slash and you have multiplication which is the asterisk okay so whenever you want to use a formula hit equals and then use your cell references to uh, choose the cells you want to use or you can use the sum feature that's about it for this lesson looking at basic formulas in another tube we'll be looking at how you can uh, use constants variables so for example instead of having it copied down in here where it done c4 sorry c3 c4 and c5 in the formula maybe you always want it to be c3 multiplied by something so this one will be c3 times d4 and that will be c3 times d5 etc so we're looking at those in other tubes and also how to reference formulas on other worksheets as well but that should give you a good understanding of how to use a basic formula in excel hope you enjoyed it see you in the next tube